Sound waves are basically longitudinal or mechanical waves that consist of particles oscillating along the same line as the wave travels, creating areas of high pressure or compression or low pressure or a rarefaction. Please watch this demo to understand this mechanism. What you're looking at is a vibrating spring. As you can see, the spring is executing a longitudinal motion. The piece of paper in the spring is telling us that the particles oscillate along the wave motion. This is exactly how a sound wave behaves. Now a simple question arises. What do we need to produce a sound wave? Well, we need a vibrating body, such as the surface of a drum, the limbs of a tuning fork, or a human vocal cord, like it is helping me in generating sound. The sound that you hear upon the beating of a drum is due to the vibration of the surface of the drum. The sound that I hear is due to the vibration of the limbs of a tuning fork. Let's check its vibration. The second thing that you need to produce a sound is a medium. Consider this ringing bell in a bell jar. The bell jar is filled with air right now. Now, if I remove the air from the bell jar with the help of a vacuum pump, the sound will be gone. So, in order to feel the effect of sound, a medium is a must. Now, how do these sound waves behave? The velocity of sound is 332 meter per second at 0 degree centigrade. Do you think that it is the same in solids, liquid and gases? Of course not. It is greatest in solids, lesser in liquids and the least in gases. It is the collision of atoms or molecules which cause sound waves to travel from one place to another place. In solids, molecules are closely packed. So the vibration is transferred quickly in case of solids as compared to liquid and gases where the molecules have to travel a greater distance for successive collision. The formula for velocity of sound in fluids is V is equal to under root E by rho. Here E is the modulus of elasticity and rho is the density of the medium. Newton calculated the velocity of sound by assuming that the passage of sound waves through air is an isothermal process which means that there will be no change in temperature during the process of passage of this sound through gases or generally in air. He proved that the modulus of elasticity E is equal to pressure of gas. He calculated the velocity of sound on this assumption which came out to be 281 meter per second which is about 16 percent less than the experimental value. A French scientist Laplace explained this difference. He said that the passage of sound waves through air is not an isothermal process it is actually an adiabatic process. The rise of temperature during compression and the fall of temperature during refraction is so rapid that no heat can enter or leave the system. The formula he gave is V is equal to under root gamma P over rho where gamma is the ratio of specific heat at constant pressure to the specific heat at constant volume. Here we have resonance tube apparatus with the help of which we can find out the velocity of sound. The method we are using here is two resonance position. We will decrease the water level with the help of this water reservoir and we have to find out a position where a loud sound is heard emitted by this tuning fork. The frequency of this tuning fork is 512 hertz. Now look here how we do it. You are listening a sound here but this is not the loudest. We have to find out a position where we get a loudest sound. So we decrease the water level. 
here we get that position now let us see how your listening sound and it is the loudest this means that resonance occurs at this length why resonance occurred here the frequency of this tuning fork is exactly equal to the natural frequency of air column vibrating in this tube now we note this length l1 this length is l1 which is about uh, 15 centimeter but we have a problem here node is formed at this level that is the water level and anti node is formed at the open end of the tube now anti node is not exactly formed at the open end it is formed somewhat above here so we have to take into account this length also which is known as end correction so the length of the air column is actually l1 plus e you know that the distance between a node and conjective anti node is equal to lambda by 4 therefore we have an equation l1 plus e is equal to lambda by 4 now we will decrease the water level again and we will get another position where we will get a loud sound again that length will be l2 plus e and l2 plus e will be equal to lambda by 4 plus lambda by 4 plus lambda by 4 in other words l2 plus e is equal to 3 lambda by 4 now if you subtract these two equations we get the result l2 minus l1 is equal to lambda by 2 or lambda is equal to 2 into l2 minus l1 the sounds of frequencies less than 20 hertz are called infrasound or infrasonics the sound of frequencies greater than 20,000 hertz is known as ultrasound or ultrasonics Due to very large frequencies, ultrasonics are very energetic waves. Diagnostic medical ultrasound is performed with the help of uh, this piece of equipment which uh, looks like a computer but is attached with uh, a few transducers and with the help of the transducer we uh, emit sound waves these high frequency sound waves are then transmitted into the human body and uh, they strike the different organs within the human body and with the echo principle they return back after striking those uh, organs and with the time that is taken for each pulse to return back we can plot that particular wave on the screen and similarly when we move our transducer over different organs we get image of those different organs that is the right kidney outline ultrasound transducer contains a piezoelectric crystal the quality of this crystal is that whenever it is struck with a mechanical force it generates an electrical charge so by repeatedly applying electrical charges to this crystal we make it vibrate and that is how we generate a sound wave by the echo principle this sound wave returns back from any object and then again it causes movement of these crystals which generates an electrical charge and that is then plotted on the screen of the monitor to give us a picture of this object ultrasound is good for the soft tissues um, bones are too hard for sound waves to penetrate that is why we don't see them well we see x-rays uh, are better for um, seeing the bones. Ultrasonics are used to measure the eye lens of a person with cataract defects, which is replaced by a plastic lens. As you can see, the gentleman has got a white reflex in the left eye, 
and that is called cataract. It is not possible for the patient to see outside and at the same time it's not possible for us to see inside as well. This is an ultrasound machine uh, used to detect various problems of the eye as well as to check the power of the lens. Now there are certain eye diseases in which uh, you cannot see the back of the eye because of media opacity such as cataracts or because of hemorrhage and you need to assess the function of the retina. For that reason, this particular machine is very helpful in deciding what is uh, going on at the back of the eye where you cannot see. At the same time, patients who need cataract surgery, they need to have uh, power of the intraocular lens checked up. And that is also possible through this machine which I uh, just demonstrated to you a, a, a while ago. Uh, so uh, the reason for that is that after the surgery they should have a near normal vision. What is a shock wave? In this figure, as airplane A travels forward, it creates longitudinal waves in air, that is, areas of compressions and rarefactions. Wave fronts can get away from the airplane and begin to disperse. Listener at X will hear waves as sound, a whoosh of air as well as separate sound of engines. Now take a look at this figure. A supersonic jet or airplane overtakes its wave fronts while creating more. So they overlap. This causes a large buildup of pressure or shock wave which is pushed in front of the plane and unable to get away. Listener at X will hear wave as a sudden loud sonic boom. Every sound has a particular set of characteristics such as intensity, loudness, pitch and quality. Once you know these characteristics, it would be easier for you dear students to distinguish between different sounds. So. Let's define what they are. What is intensity? Intensity is simply the measurement of energy carried by a wave. It is worked out as the energy of sound falling per unit area. Mathematically, intensity I equals E divided by A multiplied by T, where E is your energy, A is the area, and T is the time. As you already know that energy per unit time is power, so I simply replace that in the relation and come to the final relation I equals P divided by A. The unit of intensity is watt per meter squared. The next characteristic that I come to is loudness. The size of sensation produced when a sound falls on the ear is called loudness. It is subjective to the sensitivity of the ear but is directly related to the intensity of sound. Mathematically, loudness is proportional to the log to the base 10 i or L is equal to k into log to the base 10 into i where K is your constant of proportionality which depends on the system of units. Instead of cheap then, we can use Now let's come to the pitch. Helping. That characteristic of sound by which you can distinguish between a shrill sound and a grave sound is known as pitch. Take a piano for example. Here we have a series of notes arranged from low to high pitch with certain intervals between them. A high pitched sound has a high frequency and a low pitched sound has a low frequency. Another example is that of a woman's voice which is usually high pitched and a man's voice which is low pitched. Now let's see what quality is. What you're looking at 
is a piano and a violin. Both the instruments are being played at the same pitch. Yet we know the sound of a piano and violin. This characteristic of sound is quality. It depends upon the waveform of the sound. These are the waveforms of tuning fork, violin and a piano at the same frequency. A sound that produces a pleasing effect is known as musical sound. And a sound that produces a displeasing effect is noise. Scientifically, a sound having random fluctuations, non-symmetric and giving a disagreeable effect is known as noise. Musical sound on the other hand has periodic fluctuations, is symmetric and gives a pleasing effect. What is regarded as pleasant sound depends on culture. Nusrat Patel's voice may be velvety with a pleasing effect. But maybe not for the Europeans who worship Luciano Pavarotti. There are many psychological elements in the perception of music and noise. For instance, the clapping of hands is music to the ears for the Pakistanis in the World Cup of 92, but not for the Englishmen. Similar situation also arises in the Olympics when all countries are battling for the maximum medals. In order to study the further properties of sound, Let's first describe what the interference of sound means. When two or more waves travel in the same or different directions in a given space, variations in the size of the resulting disturbance occur at points where they meet. This effect is known as interference. Interference are basically of two types. Number one, constructive interference. The increase in disturbance or reinforcement which results from the superposition of two waves which are exactly in phase is known as constructive interference. Destructive interference, on the other hand, is the decrease in disturbance which results from the superposition of two waves which are exactly out of phase. Now that you know what interference of sound is, now let's define beats. The regular variation in loudness with time which is heard when two sounds of slightly different frequencies are heard together. It is a result of interference between the two waves. The beat frequency is equal to the difference in frequency between the two sounds. The closer together the frequency of the sounds, the slower the beats. The change in frequency of the sound heard when either the listener or the source moves relative to the other. If the distance between them is decreasing, a higher frequency sound is heard than that actually produced. If it is increasing, a lower frequency sound is heard. This train hoots while approaching and passing listener at X. Wavefronts move out at speed of sound. Then the wavefronts closer together here because train moving forward while producing sound waves. Heard at X as sound of higher frequency. Lower frequency sound will be heard when train has passed. Dopper's effect has many interesting applications. We can locate the position of a satellite by observing the change in pitch of radio signal emitted by the satellite. Traffic police uses radar gun to check the speed of automobile. It works on the principle of Doppler's effect. Radars which work on the principle of Doppler's effect are used for civil and military purposes. Very high frequency omni range VOR is a guiding system usually installed at the airports to guide the incoming aircrafts towards the location of the airport. 
It is one of the radio navigational equipment called VOR, which stands for Very High Frequency Omnidirectional Range. It's a ground-based transmitting station which radiates the required signals in the VHF frequency range. It delivers to the aircraft which are fitted with the receiver its azimuth theta with respect to the magnetic north. It also radiates the station identification code and this facility is being used by all the aircrafts which are going to and from the station. Sound waves are basically longitudinal or mechanical waves that consist of particles oscillating along the same line as the wave travels. The velocity of sound is 332 meter per second at 0 degree centigrade. Do you think that it is the same in solids, liquid and gases? Of course not. It is greatest in solids, lesser in liquids and the least in gases. These high frequency sound waves are then transmitted into the human body and uh, they strike the different organs within the human body and with the echo principle they return back after striking those uh, organs and with the time that is taken for each pulse to return back we can plot that particular wave on the screen every sound has a particular set of characteristics such as intensity loudness pitch and quality once you know these characteristics it would be easier for you dear students to distinguish between different sounds Scientifically, a sound having random fluctuations, non-symmetric and giving a disagreeable effect is known as noise. Musical sound on the other hand has periodic fluctuations, is symmetric and gives a pleasing effect. When two or more waves travel in the same or different directions in a given space, Variations in the size of the resulting disturbance occur at points where they meet. This effect is known as interference. The change in frequency of the sound heard when either the listener or the source moves relative to the other. If the distance between them is decreasing, a higher frequency sound is heard than that actually produced. If it is increasing, a lower frequency sound is heard. And that's about it. Thank you very much for watching this program with interest. Allah Hafiz.